This is called a cell. Now in physics, a cell is what you would call a single battery. So if you've got one battery in a circuit, we call that a cell, and this is the symbol. Now, if we've got two cells in a circuit, we call that a battery, and we use this symbol. Now, please don't get confused about the idea of a cell and a battery. Remember that a cell is what you would call a single battery. In physics, the word battery actually means several cells connected together. Students do find that idea a bit difficult. OK, this symbol shows us a lamp or a bulb, and it's just a circle with a cross in it. This symbol shows us an open switch, and this symbol shows us a closed switch. So let's take a look at a circuit. I've got here a cell, a bulb, and an open switch. These lines represent wires connecting everything together. So what happens if I close the switch? Well, the cell is pushing out electrons, and these can travel around the circuit like this. Scientists call this flow of electrons the current, and that's really important. The electrons are carrying energy, and they give some of this to the bulb, so the bulb lights up. The electrons make their way back to the cell, where they collect more energy, and continue travelling around again. Now this circuit has got no branches, so the electrons have to go in one direction. We call this a series circuit, and that's really important. If I now open the switch, the electrons cannot flow, so the current stops. The electrons are no longer giving the bulb any energy, so the bulb goes out. So remember that current is the flow of electrons around the circuit. The unit of current is called the ampere, and you really need to remember that. The ampere has the symbol capital A. Lastly, we measure current using an ammeter, and we're going to look at that now. I've shown you the symbol for an ammeter here, and again you have to learn this. So I want to measure the current here. So I'm going to put my ammeter in the circuit like this. The ammeter counts the number of electrons passing through it every second, and it uses that to work out the current. So in this example, the current here is 0.5 amperes. I'm now going to measure the current over here. So there's my ammeter, and in this case the current is also 0.5 amperes. Let's look at the current on the other side of the bulb. Well, there's my ammeter, and the current here is also 0.5 amperes. So finally, let's measure the current back towards the cell. So there's my ammeter, and there's the current. Again, it's 0.5 amperes. So from this, you should get the idea that current is not used up in a circuit. And in a series circuit, with no branches, the current is the same all the way around. And that's because all the electrons have to go the same way, as there are no branches for them to take. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what is meant by a parallel circuit. And then you should be able to describe how current changes in a parallel circuit. Now in the last video, we took a look at series circuits. And remember that series circuits have got no branches. We said that if we close the switch, then electrons can flow around the circuit from the cell, through the bulb, and back to the cell, and we call this flow of electrons the current. Now you'll notice that when the electrons passed through the bulb, the bulb lit up, and that's because the electrons gave energy to the bulb. If we open the switch, then the current cannot flow, so the bulb goes out. In the last video, we saw that the unit of current is called the ampere, and that we measure current with an ammeter, and an ammeter has got this symbol. We place the ammeter into the circuit like this. We said that in a series circuit, the current is the same all the way around the circuit. So if the current is 0.5 amperes here, it'll also be 0.5 amperes here, here, and here. In this video, we're going to look at parallel circuits. Now, these are a bit harder than series circuits, but they're still relatively straightforward, so don't panic. I promise that you can do them. OK. Here's a parallel circuit, and the first thing to notice is that unlike series circuits, parallel circuits have got branches. So this circuit has a cell, a closed switch, a bulb, a branch, and then another bulb. So we're going to look at measuring current in a parallel circuit.
So let's start off by measuring the current here at the start. Well, here's my ammeter in the circuit, and let's just say that the current is 1 ampere, which is actually a big current. Now remember that a current is simply a flow of electrons through the wire. So now we've got a problem since there's a branch, and that means that the electrons can either go this way, or they can go this way. Well, I'm going to take a look at the current here. So there's my ammeter, and let's just say that the current is 0.5 amperes. So I'd like to know what the current is in the other branch here. So there's my ammeter, and when I check the current, I find that it's 0.5 amperes, and there it is. Now you'll notice something here. The total current in the two branches is 0.5 amperes plus 0.5 amperes, which is 1 ampere. And that's the same as the total current before it's split into the branches. Okay, finally, we're going to take a look at the current here, where the branches have rejoined. So there's my ammeter. Now, can you work out what the current here will be? Well, it's actually one ampere, and that's because the current in the two branches has now joined back together. Okay, now, in this example, I made the current the same in the two branches, here and here, but they don't have to be the same. So here's the same circuit, and the current at the start is still 1 ampere. But when I measure the current here, it turns out to be 0.7 amperes. So can you work out what the current will be here? Well, it will actually be 0.3 amperes, and that's because the currents in the two branches have to add up to the current at the start. So if we have 1 ampere at the start, and 0.7 amperes here, then we must have 0.3 amperes here. So, what's the current going to be here? Well, just like before, it has to be the same as the total current before it branched. So the current here has to be 1 ampere. And remember that current is never used up in electrical circuits. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain what's meant by potential difference, and then describe potential difference in series circuits. So far, we've had a good look at current, and you should remember that current is simply a flow of electrons through a circuit. So electrons move out of the cell, make their way through the wire, pass through the bulb, and then return back to the cell. Now the bulb lights up, and that's because the electrons are giving the bulb energy. So the electrons leaving the cell are carrying energy. They give their energy to the bulb, and then they return back to the cell with no energy. So we're getting the idea that energy is carried in electrical circuits. We call this energy the potential difference. Some students do find the idea of this quite tricky, but you need to know that it's not that hard. All the basic ideas are relatively straightforward. Let's go back to our series circuit. Because the switch is closed, there's a current running through the circuit, and scientists show this as a small arrow like this. We know that the electrons leave the cell carrying energy, and they give that energy to the bulb, and then they return to the cell carrying no energy. So I want to know how much energy the electrons are giving to the bulb. And remember that we call this energy the potential difference. So how do we measure potential difference? Well, scientists use a voltmeter. I'm going to place a voltmeter across the cell like this. The voltmeter measures the energy that the electrons are carrying when they leave the cell. So let's imagine that the potential difference across the cell is 9 volts. That means that the electrons leaving the cell are carrying 9 volts of energy. Now we can use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the bulb, and this tells us how much energy the electrons are giving to the bulb. So there's my voltmeter, and it tells us that the potential difference across the bulb is 9 volts. Now can you see here that the potential differences are the same? So this one shows that the cell is giving 9 volts of energy to the current, and this one shows that the current is giving that 9 volts of energy to the bulb. OK, so I hope that you're getting the idea that the potential difference tells us the energy that a cell gives to the current. And it also tells us how much energy is used by a component in a circuit, such as a bulb. 
I'm going to set up another CV circuit just like before, but in this one I'll be putting two identical bulbs in, like this. Now the first thing that I notice is that both bulbs are now dimmer than when I had one bulb in the circuit. So how can we explain that? Well let's start off by measuring the potential difference across the cell with a voltmeter like we did before. So there's our voltmeter and it shows us that the energy given to the current is 9 volts just like before. I now want to measure the potential difference across the bulbs, so I'm going to put a voltmeter across each bulb like this. And I find that the potential difference across this bulb is 4.5 volts, and the potential difference across the other bulb is also 4.5 volts. So can you see that the total energy carried by the current has now been shared between the two bulbs? And that explains why both bulbs are dimmer than when I only had one bulb. If I only have one bulb, then all the energy from the cell is given to that one bulb, so it's bright. But when I have two bulbs, the energy from the cell is now split between the bulbs, so they're each dimmer. Now in this circuit, I've made the two bulbs identical, but they don't have to be. In this circuit, I've got two different bulbs. This bulb has a potential difference of 6 volts, whereas this one has a potential difference of 3 volts. But the key point is that the total potential difference across both bulbs is the same as the potential difference across the cell. So to recap, the cell has a potential difference of 9 volts, which means that it's giving the current 9 volts of energy. And this 9 volts of energy is shared between these two bulbs, and we can see that with a potential difference of 6 volts and 3 volts. Can you work out which of these two bulbs will be brighter? Well, the answer is this one. We know that because this bulb is using 6 volts of energy, whereas this one is only using 3 volts, so it'll be dimmer. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe potential difference in parallel circuits. In previous videos, we've been looking at the idea of current. We said that current is a flow of electrons moving from the cell, around the circuit, and back to the cell. In the last video, we started looking at potential difference. We said that potential difference tells us the energy that's being carried by the current leaving a cell. We measure potential difference using a voltmeter, and we looked at potential difference in series circuits. So let's recap. Here's a series circuit, and we know that a current is carrying energy from the cell to the bulb. We can use a voltmeter across the cell to measure how much energy it's giving to the current. So here's the voltmeter, and it shows that the potential difference across the cell is 9 volts. So the cell is giving the current 9 volts of energy. The current now flows through the bulb and gives this energy to the bulb so the bulb lights up. If we put a voltmeter across the bulb like this, we can see that the potential difference is also 9 volts. So the current is taking 9 volts of energy from the cell and delivering it to the bulb. We then looked at what happens when the circuit contains several identical bulbs like this. Now the potential difference from the cell is shared between the two bulbs, and we can see that on the voltmeters. In this case, the 9 volts from the cell is split evenly between the two bulbs, but this doesn't have to be the case. This circuit has got two bulbs, but they're not identical. This bulb is using 6 volts of energy and will be bright. The other bulb is using 3 volts of energy and will be dimmer. But you'll notice that the total potential difference across the bulbs is always the same as the potential difference across the cell. So in this video, we're going to take a look at potential difference in parallel circuits. Here's a parallel circuit containing two identical bulbs, and you'll see that parallel circuits have branches, so the current does not have to go in one direction. So the current leaves the cell like this, but when it reaches the branch point, the current can go in this direction or in this direction. So let's take a look at potential difference in parallel circuits. Like before, I can use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the cell and there's the voltmeter. Let's say that the potential difference across the cell is 9 volts. So what will the potential difference be across the bulbs in the two branches? 
Well, let's use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across this bulb. So here's my voltmeter, and I find that the potential difference across this bulb is 9 volts. So let's see what the potential difference is across the bulb in the other branch. Here's my voltmeter. We find that the potential difference in this branch is also 9 volts. So the key idea you have to get is that the potential difference in each branch of a parallel circuit is the same as the potential difference across the cell. So in this circuit we know that the current is giving the same amount of energy to both of these bulbs, so these two identical bulbs will be equally bright. So remember that in a series circuit like this one, the potential difference from the cell is shared between all the components in the circuit. Whereas in a parallel circuit like this one, each separate branch gets the same potential difference as the cell. OK, here's a slightly tricky one to see if you get the idea. So I've now got one bulb, and it's in parallel with two bulbs. And you'll notice that these two bulbs are in series with each other. So I've given you the potential difference across this bulb. It's got a potential difference of 2 volts. I want you to tell me the potential difference across the top bulb here and the potential difference across the bottom bulb here. So you can pause the video now if you need to. OK, let's take a look at the top bulb. Well, this bulb is in its own branch, so we know that it must have the same potential difference as the cell, which is 9 volts. Now the bottom branch has got two bulbs, but we know that the total potential difference across this whole branch must be the same as the cell, so that's 9 volts. But of the 9 volts across this branch, 2 volts is already being used by this bulb. So that means that the other bulb must have a potential difference of 7 volts. So you'll notice now that the top branch has a potential difference of 9 volts, and the bottom branch has a potential difference of 9 volts. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine the potential difference produced by batteries. OK, so in the previous videos, we've been looking at potential difference in series and parallel circuits. So here's a series circuit. We said that electrons flow out of the cell, pass through the bulb, and return to the cell, and we call this flow of electrons the current. When the electrons leave the cell, they're carrying energy, and we call this energy the potential difference. We can measure this with a voltmeter. So this shows that the potential difference of the cell is 9 volts. In other words, the electrons leaving the cell are carrying 9 volts of energy. They give this energy to the bulb, and we can see that by using a voltmeter. This shows that the potential difference across the bulb is also 9 volts. So the electrons are delivering 9 volts of energy from the cell to the bulb. If we have more than one bulb, then the potential difference of the cell is shared between them. So in this example, one bulb has a potential difference of 6 volts, and one bulb has a potential difference of 3 volts. The key point is that the total potential difference across the two bulbs is the same as the cell. Now we've got a circuit with two bulbs in parallel, and a parallel circuit has branches. We can use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the cell. Let's say it's 9 volts. Now the key point of a parallel circuit is that all the branches have the same potential difference as the cell. So in this case the cell has a potential difference of 9 volts. And that means that this branch also has a potential difference of 9 volts, and so does this branch. OK, let's go back to our series circuit. We've got here a single cell, and the voltmeter tells us that it's got a potential difference of 9 volts. So what would the potential difference be if I have two 9-volt cells together? Remember that we call two or more cells a battery. Well, each cell has a potential difference of 9 volts, and we've got two cells. So the total potential difference across the battery must be 2 times 9 volts, which is 18 volts. What about this circuit? This has got three 9-volt cells. So the total potential difference is 3 times 9 volts, which is 27 volts. OK, take a look at this circuit. This has got two cells, but you'll notice something odd about them. The two cells are pointing in opposite directions. 
Now, because they're pointing in opposite directions, their potential differences cancel out. So the overall potential difference will be zero volts. Now look at this circuit. This has got three 9-volt cells, but one of them is pointing in the wrong direction. So these two cells cancel each other out. And that means that the potential difference across these three cells is now just 9 volts. So remember that if the cells point in the same direction, then their potential differences add together. If they point in opposite directions, then they cancel each other out. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain what's meant by the resistance of a component in a circuit. And then you should be able to calculate the resistance of a component. Some students find the idea of resistance a bit tricky. It does take some thought and you might need to watch this video and the next couple of videos a few times until you get it. Okay, we've been looking at electrical circuits. This is a series circuit because it has no branches. We've got a cell and that cell is causing a current to flow in the circuit. And remember that a current is a flow of electrons through the circuit. We can measure the current by using an ammeter like this. Now the electrons are carrying electrical energy from the cell and they're passing it to the bulb, which is why the bulb lights up. We can find out how much energy is being released by the cell by measuring the potential difference across it, and we do that by using a voltmeter like this. So this voltmeter tells us that the cell has got a potential difference of 9 volts, and that means that it's giving 9 volts of energy to the current. Now there's one bulb in this circuit, and there it is, so this bulb will receive all of the energy from the current, and we can see that by measuring the potential difference across the bulb. When we use our voltmeter, we can see that the bulb is using 9 volts of energy. So we know that the cell is releasing 9 volts, and all of that energy is used by the bulb. Now in this video, we're going to look at resistance. Now don't panic, it does require a bit of thought, but it's not as difficult as it looks. To understand resistance, we've got to look at how electricity moves through components. And the word component just means part of a circuit, such as bulbs and wires. So I've got here a picture of a wire, and remember that wires conduct electricity. So here are the atoms in the wire. Remember that a current is a flow of electrons, and here are the electrons making their way through the wire in the component. Now it's not easy for the electrons to move because they're colliding with the atoms, and this slows them down. So it actually takes a lot of energy for the electrons to make their way through a component. And as we've said before, the potential difference tells us the energy that the current loses as it passes through the component. So the resistance gives us an idea of the energy needed to move a current through a component. If a component has a high resistance, then it will take a large potential difference to get our current to move through it. The unit of resistance is called the ohm, and it has this symbol. So how do we calculate resistance? Well, we use this equation, R equals V over I. R is the resistance in ohms, V is the potential difference in volts, and I is the current in amperes. Some students prefer to use a triangle like this one, so you can use it if you prefer to. Remember, in a triangle, we cover the part of the equation that we're trying to calculate. OK, here's a question for you to try. A wire has a current of 2 amperes and a potential difference of 100 volts. Calculate the resistance of the wire. So we're calculating R and the triangle tells us that R equals V divided by I. V is 100 volts and I is 2 amperes, so there they are. That gives us a value of 50 ohms for the resistance. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by a resistor. You should be able to recognise the symbol for a resistor and then calculate resistance for a resistor in a circuit. So we've seen now that the current is a flow of electrons moving around a circuit, and the unit of current is the ampere, and we measure the current using an ammeter like this. We know that the current delivers energy to components in the circuit, such as a bulb, and the potential difference tells us the energy that the current is providing. We measure potential difference using a voltmeter, and the unit of potential difference is the volt. In a previous video, we said that wires are good conductors of electricity, and that's because they've got free electrons which can move. 
The problem is that it can be hard for the electrons to move as they collide with the atoms of the metal and we call this resistance. Resistance tells us how hard it is for electrons to pass through a component such as a bulb or a wire. So the electrons have to use energy to pass through a component and we call this the potential difference. So if we go back to our circuit, if we measure the current going through a component and the potential difference across it, we can calculate the resistance and that's what the exam could ask you to do. To calculate resistance, we use the equation R equals V over I. R is the resistance and the unit of resistance is the ohm. V is the potential difference in volts and I is the current in amperes. You can use this triangle if you prefer. Remember that you cover the part of the triangle that you want to calculate. So again, if we're calculating resistance, we use R equals V over I. Okay, now in this video, we're going to look at a component which is called a resistor. Sometimes students do struggle a bit to get their heads around the idea of a resistor. Many students ask what resistors actually do. We're going to explore that in this video. So this is what resistors look like and this is the symbol for a resistor. So let's start by looking at what resistors do in a circuit. Well the first thing to understand is that resistors are designed to have a resistance. In other words, electrons have to use a lot of energy to pass through resistors. So you might be thinking, what's the point of that? Well, take a look at this circuit. In this circuit, we've got a bulb. The voltmeter tells us that all of the potential difference from the cell is being passed to the bulb, so the bulb is very bright. Now, if I want to make the bulb dimmer, then I can put a resistor in the circuit like this. Now, some of the potential difference provided by the cell is being used by the resistor, so the bulb is now dimmer. Resistors actually get hot as the electrons waste energy making their way through, and that heat can be really useful. Take a look at this toaster. The wires are glowing red and that's because they're designed to have a high resistance. The electrons passing through these wires lose a lot of energy, so the wires get hot, and that's how a toaster works. OK, we're going to calculate the resistance for a resistor now, but don't panic, it's really very easy. Here's a resistor in a circuit. The ammeter tells me that the current is 0.1 amperes. The voltmeter tells me that the potential difference across the resistor is 10 volts. So I want to calculate the resistance of this resistor. I'm going to use the equation R equals V over I. Well, V is 10 volts and I is 0.1 amperes. So if I put this into my equation, then that gives me the resistance as 100 ohms. OK, I hope that you're feeling happy with resistors. There's nothing scary about them. Resistors are actually really useful in circuits, and there are several different types. So in the next few videos, we're going to be taking a closer look at resistors. And I really hope that you get the idea that resistors are actually fairly easy. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the link between current and potential difference for a resistor. I should point out that this frequently comes up as an exam question. OK, we've been looking at resistors and we said that resistors are designed so that electrons waste energy passing through them. That idea seems kind of strange, but resistors are actually really useful. For example, in this toaster, the wires have a high resistance. That means that the electrons use a lot of energy passing through the wire, so it gets hot and that's how a toaster works. We see the same idea in an electric kettle and an electric hob. Resistors are really useful in a circuit. In this circuit, the bulb is bright because it's using all of the potential difference provided by the cell. But in this circuit, we've used a resistor to make the bulb dimmer. The resistor is now using some of the potential difference from the cell, so less energy is available to the bulb. We've seen how we can calculate resistance if we know the current and the potential difference. This circuit shows a resistor, and we've got a current of 0.1 amperes and a potential difference of 10 volts. So we calculate resistance using the equation R equals V over I. V is the potential difference, so that's 10 volts. And I is the current, and that's 0.1 amperes. So the resistance in this case is 10 divided by 0.1, which gives us a value of 100 ohms. OK, so now we're going to look a bit closer at resistance. 
Some of this might seem a bit tricky, but it really isn't too bad, so please stick with it, you will get it. We're going to investigate what happens to the current through a resistor when we increase the potential difference. I'm going to measure how much current goes through the resistor when I increase the potential difference across the resistor, and I'm going to plot my results on the graph down here. I'll be using a resistance of 100 ohms, but you'd see the same pattern for any resistor. So I'm going to start with a potential difference of 0 volts across my cell. That means that I also have 0 volts across my resistor like this. We can see on the ammeter that we have a reading of 0 amperes for current. And this makes sense because if the potential difference is 0, then the electrons have got no energy. So they can't move through the resistor, so the current will also be 0. So let's put that result on our graph. So we've got a current of 0 amperes for a potential difference of 0 volts. And there it is. Now we're going to increase the potential difference to 10 volts. And that gives us a current of 0.1 amperes. So let's put that point on our graph. And there it is. Right, let's increase the potential difference to 20 volts. Well, that gives us a value of 0.2 amperes for our current. So let's put that point on our graph. And there it is. OK, now I'm going to increase the potential difference by 10 volts each time, and then measure the current and plot all those numbers on my graph. Now, we can see a clear pattern here, so let's take a closer look. We can see that the current moving through the resistor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the resistor. And we know that because we get a straight line going through zero. Now remember, this only applies if the temperature is kept constant. And that's really important, and the exam could ask you that. So the key point is that the current through a resistor is directly proportional to the potential difference, but this only applies if we keep the temperature constant. In this video, you should be able to recognise the symbol for a variable resistor. You should then be able to calculate the current in a circuit when the resistance is varied. Now in the last few videos we've been looking at resistors and this shows you the symbol for a resistor here. I've got a resistor in this circuit. In the previous video we said that if we know the current and the potential difference then we can calculate the resistance. And to do that we use the equation R equals V over I. R is the resistance in ohms, V is the potential difference in volts and I is the current in amperes. So imagine that our ammeter tells us that the current is 0.1 amperes and the voltmeter tells us that the potential difference is 10 volts. We can work out the resistance using the equation so there are our numbers and this gives us a resistance of 100 ohms. Now what would happen if I had two 100 ohm resistors in series like this? Well now their total resistance is 200 ohms which is what you'd expect. Now it's important to realise that these are fixed resistors. Their resistance is set at a fixed value by the manufacturer. In a previous video we looked at how the current through a resistor changes when you increase the potential difference, and we got this graph. So if we increase the potential difference across a resistor, then we find that the current also increases. In fact, it gives us a straight line going through zero, and that tells us that the current is directly proportional to the potential difference. This is only true if we make sure that the temperature is constant, and it's really important that you learn that for your exam. OK, so remember that this symbol shows us a fixed resistor. In other words, its resistance is set by the manufacturer. But we can also get resistors that allow us to change the resistance. These are called variable resistors, and they've got this symbol. I've shown you here two types of variable resistor. This one has a slide, and this one has a dial. But the key point is that you can set the resistance yourself. It's not fixed. Variable resistors are used a lot in electronics. For example, a volume dial on a radio is a variable resistor. In the exam, you could be asked to calculate the current when a variable resistor is in a circuit. It's not too tricky, so let's take a look. I've got a circuit here with a variable resistor. The variable resistor is set to a resistance of 500 ohms, and the potential difference across the variable resistor is 50 volts. Calculate the current moving through the circuit. Well, to do this, we simply use our equation R equals V over I. So R is the resistance in ohms, V is the potential difference in volts, 
and I is the current in amperes. We're calculating the current, so we'll need to rearrange the equation for I, and here it is. Now before I go any further, I just want to remind you that if you struggle with maths, and many students do, you can use a triangle for this calculation, and here it is. Remember that you cover the part of the triangle that you want to calculate. OK, so here's our equation again. So let's calculate the current running through the circuit. Well, the potential difference is 50 volts, so here it is. We've set the resistance at 500 ohms, so there that is. And that gives us a current of 0.1 amperes. Now I'm going to reduce the resistance from 500 ohms to 50 ohms. And let's see the effect that that has on the current in the circuit. OK, so here's my lower resistance. Remember that I'm keeping the potential difference the same at 50 volts. So let's put those numbers into our equation. So the potential difference V is still 50 volts, and there it is. I've now reduced the resistance to 50 ohms, and that's there. So that means that the current is now 1 ampere. So can you see that reducing the resistance causes more current to flow? That's really important, and it makes sense because the resistance resists the current. Going on to current electricity, you need to be familiar with these 12 circuit symbols. So quickly going through them, we've got a cell which you must have to get a current. Adding two cells or more together makes a battery, a battery of cells. You need to connect them up with leads and you also then can get a bulb to light. Often you put a switch in the circuit so you can turn it on and off. Now this one here is a resistor, which is going to come on more. So the rectangle represents a resistor. The next three components are types of resistor. So this one is a variable resistor with the arrow through there. means you can change the resistance. This one, which is again the resistor symbol, but with a line through like that, is a thermistor. Therm meaning heat, so it's a resistor that depends on heat. And the last one is called an LDR resistor with arrows coming in to represent light, so it's a light-dependent resistor. More light on it changes the resistance. To measure electricity, the current, we use an ammeter, capital A in the middle, and we can also use the power or the voltage measured with a voltmeter. And a few of the components I'll come on to in a minute is a diode and also a fuse. Be familiar with those circuit symbols. In a traditional circuit, here's a very, very simple circuit, a battery here and a bulb, complete circuit, complete loop, so the current can flow. What actually happens in the circuit is electrons, which are negative, come from the negative uh, terminal, and they will flow around the circuit, carrying energy to the bulb, and that energy is then turned into heat and light, um, which is given off by the bulb. The electrons then go back to the cell, to the battery, and collect more energy, and that produces a circuit, which means the bulb is always lit until the circuit is broken. So although we've got electrons going from minus to positive, by convention, we talk about current going from positive to negative. OK, here's some basic ideas when considering circuits. We can measure the electric current. Current is measured with an ammeter, and current is measured in amps or amperes. Capital A there, because it's somebody's name, Ampere, Mr. Ampere, so you must use a capital letter. Same with potential difference, which is also called voltage. You might be familiar with voltage, but you may see the term potential difference on an exam. It is the same as voltage, and it's measured with a voltmeter and measured in volts, and it's named after here Mr. Voltar. So again, capital letter. The third quantity is that of resistance, which again is named after scientist George Ohm. And the symbol is the omega, the Greek letter there, which is capital Greek letter there, to represent ohms. That's how much resistance or opposition there is to electric current. So let's take a look at some simple circuits. Here's a cell and a bulb. The bulb will light. What would happen if you had two cells? Well, you could represent it here. More light, more energy would come off because you've got more energy given to the bulb. So the idea is here that if you add more batteries or more cells together, you get more force, you get more energy, you get brighter bulbs. What happens if you add more than one bulb then? If you've got two bulbs in series, and a series circuit means it's all in one loop, 
then it's got the current has got to go through two bulbs. So it's got to share its energy out between the two. It sees what's called more resistance, and that resistance means there's less current. So let's look at that in more detail. If a series circuit like this, if you've got two amps flowing through the circuit here, that two amps is going to go through that bulb, through that bulb, and back, and you've just got one complete loop. Now, like a lot of laws in science, you can't lose current. There's conservation of current. So it doesn't matter where you measure the current in this circuit, it will always be two amps. It doesn't matter where you put that ammeter. So the circuit, the current is always the same. If you look at the current in a parallel circuit, so parallel circuits look like this, the bulbs here, that bulb and that bulb are parallel to each other, then what happens is the current will be divided up. So here comes the current. It gets to this bit. Half will go that way and half will go that way. So the current here divides in two and so the bulb gets equal amount of current. You can get more current. Let's have a look at three bulbs. If you put a value on it here, if there's six amps coming down here, that would get two, that one would get two, and that one would get two. And then when all of those currents join up again to go back to the battery, obviously you will get the six amps there and that six amps will go back through the cell. Let's have a look at voltage or potential difference now, measured with a voltmeter. Voltmeter is always put in parallel. This is parallel to the battery. So if it tells you it's 6 volt battery, it's telling you the voltage across the battery. If you've got bulbs in series, three in series here, and they're identical, you've got 6 volts. I'm sure you've guessed it, that each one would share the voltage, and the voltage would be 2 volts, 2 volts, 2 volts, to add up to 6. If the voltmeter went across two bulbs, because that's two and that's two, you add together, that voltmeter would read four volts. Okay, and if we look at voltage in a parallel circuit, when two bulbs are put across each other in parallel, you can see they're both connected directly to the battery. So the rule here is that both those voltmeters would read four volts, not divine it up this time. They both get four volts each. So in summary, in a series circuit, the current is the same at any point, but the voltage will be split up over each component in that series circuit. In a parallel circuit, it's the current that splits up, but the voltage stays the same. Worth remembering these two simple rules. Okay, moving on to resistance. Resistance is how much it resists or how much it opposes the current. So the higher the resistance, the more it tries to slow down or stop the current. It's measured in ohms. So a higher amount of ohms means more resistance and less current. Here's Ohm's law equation. Resistance can be worked out by how much voltage there is per current. Again, coming back to our equations here, nice easy one to remember, VCR, you've heard of VCRs before, will help you rearrange it, make sure you've got the units correct. So here's an example of an exam question. So if this voltmeter is reading 10 volts and the current in the circuit, going around this circuit, is 2 amps, then the resistance of this bulb would be 10 divided by 2, 10 volts divided by 2 amps, would that, res that bulb there would be a 5 ohm resistor. And in total, you'd be 5 plus 5 plus 5. You'd have a resistance of 15 ohm. These are the electrical circuit symbols that will be used in Edexcel exams. Note that transformers are not on the dual award syllabus. If you don't know any of these, I suggest you pause this video now. These are the other circuit symbols that will be used. Let's look at series circuits. The current in a series circuit is the same at all points. You can imagine current as being the flow of electrons. No electrons leak out of this circuit and so the current must be the same at all places around the loop. Voltage is the energy used per unit charge. And in series, the voltage is shared between the components. Here, the battery supplies 6 volts. So 6 volts of energy per coulomb are supplied. And that means that 6 volts of energy must be used up by these components. If the two components are identical, then they'll have the same voltage across them. But either way, the voltage of these two must add up to the voltage supplied. If one of these bulbs break then both bulbs will go out because in series the bulbs 
tracks that have the same current passing through them, so a break would stop the supply. In series, these bulbs can't be controlled independently by switches, and if you add more bulbs, then you'd add more resistance to the circuit, and so the bulbs would get a bit dimmer. In a parallel circuit, the voltage across any branch is the same as the supply voltage. So this battery supplies 6 volts. Every component connected in parallel will also get 6 volts across it. The current in a parallel circuit, however, divides. You can think of current in a similar way that you'd think of current in a river. The two amps supplied here will split. One amp flows this way and one amp flows this way. The way that it splits will be dependent on the resistance of the branches. If more branches were added, then the total resistance of the circuit would be smaller and more current in total would be drawn. That's why if you keep on adding parallel branches, the total current increases and each bulb will stay as bright as the other ones. Parallel circuits are therefore used in domestic lighting circuits so that the bulbs can be controlled independently by switches in line with them and all the bulbs will get the same voltage and therefore will be the same brightness. You need to be able to produce a current voltage graph for any component. This circuit uses a battery and a variable resistor to adjust the resistance here and that will change the current passing through the circuit. An ammeter is connected in series with the component to measure the current through it and a voltmeter is connected in parallel with it to measure the voltage across it. You need to know that voltmeters go in parallel and ammeters in series. You need to know what current voltage graphs would look like for different components. A resistor has a constant resistance and the current is directly proportional to the voltage, so the graph would be a straight line. Note it's symmetrical. Resistors behave the same in negative voltages as they do for positive voltages. The current goes backwards in the other direction. The formula that relates resistance to current and voltage is V equals IR. Voltage is current times resistance. Let's put in a quick example. In the circuit shown, the voltage across the resistor here is 1.6 volts and the current is 0.4 amps. The current through this resistor is going to be the same as the current shown on the ammeter because they're in series. And the voltage is the voltage across this component. So to work out this component's resistance, we use R equals V divided by I, which gives us 4 ohms. You might have thought of current as a flow of negatively charged electrons. In fact, current, which gives them the symbol I for intensity, is the rate of flow of charge measured in coulombs per second. You need to know the formula that relates these terms, charge equals current times time. Before we apply that formula, it's worth noting that current flow is considered to be from positive to negative. In actual fact, we now know that electrons flow around the circuit. Electrons are negatively charged, so will be repelled from the negative terminal of a cell and attracted to the positive terminal. So electron flow is in the opposite direction to conventional current flow. Let's look at an example using the charge formula. How much charge would flow through a kettle when it boils if it draws a current of 8 amps and takes 2 minutes to boil? So the question is asking you for the current, so charge is the term we're after. Rearrange the equation to make charge the subject and convert units into standard units, that is seconds. So 2 minutes is 120 seconds and Q equals IT, so 8 amps multiplied by 120 seconds gives 960 coulombs of charge. If you're doing separate science, you need to have a better understanding of what voltage is. In this analogy, these sacks represent a sack full of electrons and that represents one coulomb of charge. The charge makes its way around a circuit and we know that charge and current is conserved around a series circuit. The current at any point is the same. However, as the sacks move round the circuit, they gain energy and lose energy in various places. This cell, or battery of cells, supplies 3 volts. That means that 
one coulomb of charge, or one sack, gains three joules of energy when it passes it. Any points connected with a wire are at the same voltage, and so this sack also has three joules of energy. When it passes this bulb, the bulb has a potential difference of one volt across it, and that means that the sack just to the left of the bulb will have only two joules of energy remaining. The final component must take the remaining two volts, and so the sacks here have no joules of energy remaining. Potential difference is the difference in energy levels, that's the number of these red dots or smarties, per coulomb, that's per sack. So there's two volts difference across this variable resistor and one volt difference across this light bulb. Voltage is the energy transferred per unit of charge and that's a good definition to learn for your exam. And a volt means one joule per coulomb. A longer wire has more resistance than a shorter wire. As electrons try and make their way down the wire um, fixed metal atoms get in the way and the more length of wire you have the more metal atoms you have and so the greater the resistance. Thicker wires will have less resistance because there are more free paths for electrons to take as they go down the wire. In fact if you had a greater area you would also fit more electrons at once down the wire so the resistance would be less. Resistance is directly proportional to length that means if you double the length you double the resistance and resistance is inversely proportional to area that means if you double the area you would halve the resistance. You might be asked to do an example with a calculation to do with this. So imagine you had an electricity pylon 100 meters long which had a cross-sectional area of 2 centimeters squared and that wire had a resistance of 2 ohms. What would be the resistance of one kilometre length of wire of twice the area? So to solve this we need to notice that the length of wire has got longer and the area has got larger compared to before. In fact the new length is ten times as long and the new area is two times larger. So the new wire's resistance will be ten times larger but two times smaller. That makes ten over two which is five times greater. So the ratio will be five times bigger than it was before, or 10 ohms. There's a number of circuit symbols given in the Cambridge syllabus. These are the ones you are going to be expected to use. The Cambridge course covers some rules about series and parallel circuits. Firstly, current is the same at all places in a series loop. And if objects have resistance, you would add up the resistances in series to get the total resistance. So for example, if these two bulbs have a resistance of 50 ohms, the total resistance of the entire circuit would be 50 plus 50, or 100 ohms. In series, voltage is shared between components. So this power supply delivers 6 volts. So you'd measure 6 volts across here with a voltmeter you would measure 3 volts across each of these bulbs provided they are identical and have the same resistance. In parallel, the voltage across each branch is the same. 6 volts is the supply EMF or electromotive force. There will be 6 volts across this bulb and 6 volts across this bulb. If we add another branch over here, that would also have 6 volts across it, no matter what is connected in this extra branch. The current in parallel circuits divides, so that the total current is equal to the sum of all the branch currents. So in this case, 1 plus 1 makes 2 amps. House lighting is wired in parallel. Each of these branches can be switched on independently and as you add another branch it would draw an amp and so the total current would go up to 3 amps. That is, each bulb would use up as much energy as each other and adding an extra bulb would draw more current from the supply. You'll remember of course that each parallel branch will get the total supply voltage. 
As you add more branches to a parallel circuit, the resistance of the circuit goes down. Here, the current can choose one option, or it can choose the other option for the circuit. As the current gets a choice of two places to go, it's clearly easier for electrons at this point because there are now two branches for them to choose. The total resistance of this circuit must be lower than 50 ohms. In fact, it will always be lower than the smaller of the two resistors. To calculate the total resistance, you would use this formula. 1 over the total is equal to 1 over the first branch plus 1 over the second branch. Let's do an example using that formula. Calculate the effective total resistance of these two 50 ohm lamps in parallel. So 1 over the total is going to be 1 over 50 plus 1 over 50. Might be a good idea to just type those on your calculator and express the answer as a decimal. We of course want to find out the total resistance, not 1 over the total. So to find that we'd need to take the reciprocal of this number, or 1 over. 1 over 0.04 is 25 ohms. And it shouldn't be a surprise that that is half of these two 50 ohm resistors. Now we can work out the current in the whole circuit because we know the supply voltage and we know the total resistance. 5 over 25 is 0.2 of an amp. When a switch is closed as shown, it will allow current to flow through it. When the arm of the switch is opened, as we can see here, it will no longer allow current to flow through. Okay, a cell is a component which pushes current around the circuit. Its symbol has a long side and a short side, as you can see here. It's important for you to remember that the long side is the positive end of the cell and the other is the negative. When we connect two or more cells together, we form a battery. Let's look at what the circuit symbol looks like for a battery of two cells. There's our first cell, the connection between them and the second cell. And the left here again is positive, while the right is negative. Next up we have the symbol for an indicator lamp, which is like this. It's just a circle with a big X through it. To draw a bulb, you draw a semicircle like so, and then a circle around that. Now in the exam, if they ask you to draw a bulb, you can actually use either of these symbols, whichever you prefer really. A diode is a device that only allows current to flow through it in one direction, as indicated by this arrow. Right here you have the full circuit symbol for the diode. Now this particular diode will only allow current to flow through it from left to right because of the arrow orientation. An LED or a light emitting diode has almost exactly the same symbol as you can see. Now the two little arrows that I'm drawing coming out of the LED represent the light that it emits when current flows through it. Next, let's go on to the four types of resistors that you need to know about for your exam. A fixed resistor is very simple to draw. It's just a rectangle with its two connecting wires, as shown. A variable resistor is almost the same. The only difference is that you also draw a diagonal arrow through it like this. You can change the resistance of a variable resistor. A thermistor is a resistor whose value changes with temperature which makes this component very useful in temperature sensing circuits. And the last of the resistors we're going to look at here is the LDR or light dependent resistor. Now, as the name suggests, the resistance of this component changes with brightness. There are two meters that we need to know about for the exam. The first is the ammeter, which measures the current through part of a circuit, and then the voltmeter, which measures the potential difference between two points in a circuit. We'll talk lots about current and potential difference in our next video, but before then, finishing off with our last component here, which is the fuse. Fuses set a maximum value on the current that can flow through part of a circuit. We know from the circuit symbols video that a cell is something that pushes current around a circuit. Now one of the simplest circuits we can build looks a little something like this. The current which comes out of one end of the cell 
flows around the wires through the bulb, around some more wire and then back into the other end of the cell. Now this current we're talking about is actually made up of moving electrical charges. Because these charges can't be used up, this means that the total current leaving the cell must be equal to the total current returning to it. As a matter of fact, in a circuit like this, the current is exactly the same everywhere. So we could put an ammeter here, or here, or anywhere else in the circuit for that matter, and it would always show exactly the same value. One of the best ways to think about this is to think of a river making its way downstream. The current of the river is made up of moving water particles, just as an electrical current is made up of moving charge. Even though the river might bend a little this way and that way, the amount of water that went into it at one end is going to be equal to the amount of water that leaves it at the other, and the current won't change as you go downstream. Okay, now that we're done with our little trip down the river, let's look at electricity again. Now the equation linking charge and current is as shown. Q here stands for charge, which is measured in coulombs, capital C for the unit. I stands for current, which is measured in amperes or just amps for short, capital A. And T stands for time in seconds. Now, if you find it useful, here is the formula triangle for this equation. All right, so let's start off with a nice simple example. Just have a quick read through here and take a look at the diagram on the right hand side. Now, before we do anything with the equation, let's just highlight the key numbers that are given to us in the question. The current is two amps and it's flowing through our bulb for three minutes. Right, let's get going on the actual solution now. Just writing down the values which we have so far. I for current has a value of two amps. Now for the time, it's slightly more complicated because as you can see from the above equation, the time has to be in seconds, but it's not a big deal to convert three minutes into seconds. So we'll just multiply three times 60 to give 180 seconds. Now that we've done that, we can use either the equation or the formula triangle. Writing down Q equals I times T, substituting in our numbers 2 times 180, and we're left with our final answer of 360 coulombs. Right, having done that one, let's go on to a slightly more complicated example next. Just spend a brief moment reading through the question. Now, as you can see, it's looking for us to calculate the reading on the ammeter. In other words, the current in the circuit. The values that were given are that the charge is five kilocoulombs and the time taken is two minutes. So let's get cracking. This question is one that could cause a lot of students stress initially. The main reason being that little KC at the very start. Now think back to anything else, you know, which looks a little bit like that. How's about kilometers? So five kilometers, we all know, is just a distance of 5,000 meters. What that means is that a charge of five kilocoulombs is a charge of 5,000 coulombs. But I haven't gotten over that little hurdle. All that remains to be done now is to actually use the equation to calculate current. Like the previous example, the time is given in minutes, but we want to convert that into seconds. So two times 60 gives 120 seconds. And now using either this equation or the formula triangle from the previous page, we make I the subject. So current I equals Q divided by T, which equals 5,000 coulombs divided by 120 seconds, which gives 41.7 amps for the current. Now that you're all experts in charge and current, let's go on to look at potential difference. A hardcore physicist might say something along the lines of this. Although that sounds absolutely terrible, what it's trying to say is actually quite simple, so let's break it down. What's going to happen in this circuit? The answer, of course, is not a lot, as there's nothing present which can push current around the circuit. 
Going back to our nice cosy circuit from earlier, we have a source of PD in the form of a cell which can push current around the circuit and through the bulb to light it. So what is this mysterious magical stuff known as potential difference? To answer that question, let's go back to our river analogy, only this time we're going to be looking at the river side on and not top down. When a water particle is at the top of the river, it has a maximum amount of gravitational potential energy. As it moves downhill, its GPE decreases and its kinetic energy increases. In other words, the change in its potential energy between the top and bottom, or its potential difference, is what caused its kinetic energy to increase. In the same way, when a charge leaves the cell in an electric circuit, it has a maximum amount of electric potential energy, or EPE for short. As it travels through the circuit and flows through different components, its EPE will decrease and the energy it loses will be given to components in the circuit. Let's go back now for a moment to our trusty old cell bulb circuit. To see exactly how this works, when our charge leaves the cell here, it has a maximum amount of EPE. When it gets to the bulb, it gives its EPE to the bulb. Because the bulb has been given this energy, it's going to start to heat up and eventually, when it's hot enough, i.e. when these little charges have given it enough energy, it will start to glow red and then white hot, emitting its own light. Now that we know what potential difference and current are, let's have a look at how these two important quantities are related by something called electrical resistance. Now this is the equation linking V, I and R. V here stands for the potential difference between two points in a circuit. It's measured in volts, capital V. I, as we already know, is the current flowing through that point in the circuit, which is measured in amps, symbol A. And as you might have guessed, R is the electrical resistance. It has units of ohms, Greek symbol omega they're used to represent those. Now just in case you find it useful, here is the formula triangle for this equation. Right, we're going to look at two examples of using V equals IR in this video. Here's the first one. As per last time, let's start by picking out the key figures from the question. As you can see, the circuit is composed of two 1.5 volt cells, an ammeter and a fixed resistor. The ammeter reading, in other words, the current is 0.5 amps, and we've been asked to calculate the resistance of the resistor. So let's get to work. Okay, the potential difference across the resistor in this question is going to be 2 times 1.5 volts, in other words, 3 volts. We have two cells there. And the current reading is 0.5 amps. Right, having done all that, we're looking for the resistance now. So all we need to do is use V equals IR. Therefore, R equals V divided by I, which equals 3 divided by 0 0.5, which equals 6 ohms. Easy peasy. Let's go on to a slightly trickier question next. All right, on to example two. As you can see, this time, we need to calculate the potential difference across the variable resistor in this circuit. Here is our variable resistor, which has a value of 10 kilo ohms or 10,000 ohms, as we know. And the current through it and around the rest of the circuit is 4 amps. So it's just a matter of substituting those simple values into V equals IR. So let's go ahead. So V is equal to 4 times 10,000, which gives 40,000 volts or 40 kilovolts, if you want to get fancy. Right, let's look on to part B. Now, in this part of the question, we can see that the student has doubled the resistance of the variable resistor. The important thing to realize is that the answer which we had for the previous part of the question, 40,000 volts, was, as a matter of fact, equal to the battery voltage or the PD across the battery. So we'll just write that into our circuit diagram. Now, as we said, the resistance doubled, so it went up to 20 kilo ohms. The current 
is what we actually need to work out. Now, rearranging V equals IR or using your formula triangle, you can see that I, the current, is equal to V divided by R, just substituting in our values. That gives 40,000 divided by 20,000, which is equal to 2 amps. Now, this answer of 2 amps illustrates a really important fact about current and resistance, and that's as follows. In part A, when the resistance was 10 kilo ohms, the current was 4 amps. But in part B, when we doubled the resistance to 20 kilo ohms, the current went down to 2 amps. In other words, this act of doubling the resistance caused the current to half. Now there's a special mathematical term we use for this relationship. We say that current and resistance are inversely proportional to one another. In other words, as you increase the resistance of part of a circuit, you decrease the current through it. In this example, we doubled the resistance of the circuit, so that halved the current through it. Trebling the resistance would have decreased the current by a factor of three. Series circuits and uh, parallel circuits. Eh? What does it mean by series circuits and a parallel circuit? This is about the connections of the resistor inside the circuit. So the resistor connected in one non-branched wire is said to be connected in series, whereas resistor connected in a branched wire is said to be connected in parallel. So to know whether the circuit is series or parallel, you check, you need to check whether there is a branch in the circuit. For example, let's see this one, okay? Uh, you see, let's say we start from here and then we go to the end. Okay, there's no branch, okay? No branch, okay, this is series circuit. Uh, this one, okay? We start from here, go here, go here, and then here. Okay, there's no branch, right? So, uh, so this is a series circuit. This one, okay, start from here. You go here, go here, and go here, okay? There's no branch, okay? No branch, yeah? and this is series circuit. Because sometimes the students say, oh, okay, now these three resistors arranged in this way, okay, this is on top of this, and this is below of this, okay? It look like a parallel circuit. Now, this is not parallel circuit, okay? It's not parallel circuit. It's a, it's a series circuit because it has no branch in the circuit. Yeah? From the beginnings to the end, there's no branch. Yeah? So this is a, it's a series circuit. Now for parallel circuit, it has branch. For example, so you start from here, you go to this point, then you can see there's three branches, right? Go here, go here, go here, three branches. Uh, then this is a parallel circuit, okay? Um, this one, okay, you go here, okay, now there's the branches here. You go here, okay, now there's the branches here, okay? Uh, so this is a parallel circuit. Uh, this is also the parallel circuit because you go here, then so, uh, it branch into two branches, right? Okay, it's split into two branches. Uh, this is also the parallel circuit because you go to this point and then it's split into two branches. Uh, so these four are arranged in parallel. Okay, so you see here uh, when when you go to some point, certain point in the circuit, it branch, it split into branches, uh, and then that is parallel circuit. So that's the difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit. Resistance in series and parallel circuit. Uh. So this is a series circuit eh? and uh, this is a parallel circuit. So let's say the resistance of uh, this resistor is R1, R2 and R3 respectively. And uh, this one also R1, R2, R3 respectively. So in series circuit, the effective resistance is equal to the sum of the individual res resistance. Effective resistance is uh, the, the total, eh? the total resistance from this point to this point. Eh? Okay. It's given uh, as uh, this, uh, R1 plus R2 plus R3 is the sum of the resistance of each resistor. Uh, R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. R1 plus R2 plus R3. Yeah? It's very easy, right? Now for parallel circuit, and you have learned this in form 3, okay? Okay, for parallel circuit, the sum of the resistance the effective resistance can be calculated from the following equations. Uh, from the following equations, one over R equal to one over R one R one plus one over R two plus one over R three. Okay, if we have three resistor. Okay, if you have four resistor, they will become plus one over R four. Uh. 
I, I don't like this these equations okay so I, I do some modifications to this equations eh? okay to make it uh, easier for the calculations eh? okay so uh, so I make this one over R to become R eh? okay I change this one over R to become R and uh, to do this then uh, this part okay this part eh, it will become the reciprocal we call it the reciprocal okay uh, then we put a bracket okay we put a bracket here and then uh, to the power of negative one okay so uh, let me rewrite it again eh? so then the equations eh, or the formulas will become uh, r equal to brackets one over r1 plus one over r2 plus one over r3 reciprocal okay now you can uh calculate this easily by using your calculator because your calculate calculator has these functions reciprocal uh this is easier this is easier for the calculations and then it can uh avoid careless mistake because if you use this one okay sometimes the student there forget to change change this one over r to r so that's careless mistake but if you use this then you don't have these problems okay straight away you will get an answer for r so that is the formulas or the equations that we are going to use to find the effective resistance in series and in a parallel circuits. Okay, now example, example. Okay, this one we discussed A and B. Okay, A. So this is a series circuit, right? Series circuit so because it has no branch. Okay, for A, uh, it has no branch. So therefore, the effective resistance R is equal to uh, 2 ohm plus 3 ohm plus 6 ohm which is equal to 11 ohm very easy right so that's for a yeah then how about b b yeah okay b it's a parallel circuit right so for parallel circuit the formula is uh, 1 over r okay 1 over r equal to uh, 1 over r1 uh, is 3 plus uh, 1 over 3 plus 1, 1 over 3, okay? Because all three resistance are, are 3 ohms, okay? So therefore, so this is equal to uh, 1 ohm. 1 ohm, uh, okay? So 1 over R equals to 1 ohm, and R also equals to 1 ohm. Uh, uh, 1 ohm. Okay. Now, uh, actually, we can do this uh, by using another method, uh, okay? Uh, okay. The, the method sounds like this. In parallel circuit, if the resistance of each resistor are the same, like 3 ohm, 3 ohm, 3 ohm, they are the same, right? Okay. Then you can find the effective resistance by using this way, okay? We divide the resistance of either one of the resistor, like 3 ohms, okay? Uh, we divide it by the number of resistor, okay? 3 ohm, we have 3 resistor, then we divide it by 3. So then the effective resistance R is equal to 3 divided by 3, which is equal to 1 ohm. Straight away, get the answer. I'll give you another exam example, okay? Let's say this one 5 ohm. This one also 5 ohm. Okay, so they are the same, right? Uh, this method only apply uh, if the resistance of each of the resistor in the parallel circuits uh, are the same. So can you please tell me what's the effective resistance? So the effective resistance is equal to the resistance of one of the resistor divided by the number of the resistor. We have two resistors, right? So divided by two. So it's equal to 2.5 ohm. Uh, one more example. Okay, this one I give four resistor. And each one six ohm. All six ohm. Six, 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 six. So what was the effective resistance? 6 divided by 4, which is equal to 1.5 ohm. If the resistance of uh, all the resistors are the same, then you can use these methods. Or else you use this. Eh? Okay. Now, of course, you can also use this method. You will get the same answer. Okay. But if the resistance is not the same for all the resistors, then you cannot use this method. You have to use this method. Eh? For C and D, eh, we call this combined circuit. This is a series circuit. This is parallel circuit. Now these two are combined circuit. Why combined circuit? Because it's a combination of series circuit and parallel circuit. For example, you can see that there are two these two resistors. Now these two resistors are connected in series, right? So this is a series circuit. But then this these two resistors, okay, are parallel 
to this one right because you see here it go here and then it's split into two branches huh? so this and these are parallel but this and these are series huh? so this is a combined circuit now for combined circuit what we do is we divide the uh, resistors into sections how we divide it depends on uh, which one is easier for the calculation for example these two are in series right so we can find the resistance easily uh, then we, we, we take this as one sections okay we take this as one sections so if it's series then uh the effective resistance is six ohm eh? six ohm okay because they are series series we uh we added up three plus three six ohms so these sections are uh, the effective resistance is six ohm okay now this section is parallel to this six ohm right this resistor so we assume that now this become one resistor okay the whole thing eh, is six ohm and this is also six ohm six ohm and six ohm and they are parallels so what's the effective resistance three yes okay straight away we take six divided by two uh, and it's equal to three ohm okay you see that that's how easy we group this resistor into sections uh, that's easier for the calculations okay that's that's for c yeah and how about d okay now for d then so we can see that so it's hard to find here and here right but it's easy for do to, to, for us to do the calculation for this one first right these two are parallels eh? parallel uh so we make this as one sections this is one sections can you please tell me what's the effective resistance of these sections two ohm divided by two resistor one ohm because it's parallel eh? If it's parallels, then uh, and the resistance of the resistor are the same, then we straight away take the resistance divided by the number of resistor. Okay, two ohm divided by two resistor become one ohm, uh, and then this resistor are uh, this resistor is series in series with these sections. Okay, so after we build a sections, we assume that this section has a big resistor. Okay, so this and this are in series now. So this is 3 ohm this is 1 ohm so what's the effective resistance r is equal to 3 ohm plus 1 equal to uh, 4 ohm that's how we find the effective resistance of a combined circuit it look very easy right you need to do a lot of exercises and then only you can master it in exam sometime they give you a few circuit and then they want you to compare uh, the effective resistance in different circuit okay they will ask you which one has higher resistance which one has lower resistance eh? uh, that's very important eh, for in analyzing circuit after this eh, okay we are going to proceed to some advanced circuits eh? okay sometimes they will ask you uh, when we add the resistor here will the current increase the current will decrease or not eh? all these are related to the resistance in the circuit therefore you need to know eh, okay in what kinds of connections of the resistor okay the resistance is higher and in what kinds of the connections of the resistor in uh, the the resistance will be lower okay mm, that's important now let's start with a simple one first eh? okay let's see this one and this one eh? now if we have one resistor 3 ohm okay of course then the resistance will be 3 ohm right and if the same uh, resistor if we have three this resistor okay and then we connect it in uh, series okay in series eh? then the effective resistance become 9 ohm 9 ohm which means eh? which means uh, in series circuit, the more resistor, the higher the resistance. One resistor, two ohm, two resistor, six ohm, three resistor, nine ohms. This is about the identical resistor. The resistance is the same for each resistor, three ohm. Okay. So for series circuit, the more resistor, the higher the resistance. Okay. Then let's see this one. Same. Still three ohm, or three ohm resistor. Okay. But we connect it in parallel parallel okay we have learned that if we connect the 3 ohm resistor parallel then the effective resistance will be 3 divided by 2 right the resistance of the uh, one of the resistor divided by the number of resistor uh, 2 resistor then we divide by 2 okay so then the effective resistance is 
1.5 ohm, uh, 3 divided by 2, 1.5 ohm. If we have 3 resistor, uh, then 3 ohm divided by 3, then it's 1 ohm. So from here, we can see that if one resistor, 3 ohm, two resistor, 1.5 ohm, three resistor, just one ohm, which means the more resistor in the parallel circuit, the lower the resistance. For series circuit, more resistor, higher resistance. But for parallel circuit, more resistors, lower resistance. So that's what you need to know, eh? okay? For series and parallel circuit, they are not the same. They are not the same. Eh? But sometime, okay, sometime uh, they may give you something like this. Three resistor, but uh, two resistor here and one resistor here, okay? Uh, if you do the calculations, then you will find that this one, the resistance is two ohm. Okay, two ohm, eh? uh, which is higher than this one. If you connect three resistor, parallel, you get one ohm. If you arrange it this way, two resistor in series and then parallel to the other one, eh? the effective resistance is just a uh, two ohm. Okay, so this one, eh? this is six ohm, eh? this is three ohm, because this section eh, is a series uh, circuit, so so the resistance is uh, for this section, eh? the resistance of this section will be six ohm. So when six ohm parallel to three ohm, the resistance is uh, two ohm. Compared to this one ohm, this is higher. This one, sometimes you need to do some calculations uh, to get the answers so that you can compare with the others, uh, okay? But for this three, you can compare it easily. You, you should know directly which one has a higher resistance, which one has lower resistance. Uh, this is a past year question, actually. It's a clone past year question. Uh. Okay, so we have three circuit. Uh, P, Q, R, okay, this one, one resistor, okay, one resistor, two resistor, and three resistor. Uh, so they want you to list down or arrange, uh, or arrange or list down the circuit in the image above according to their resistance in descending order. Descending order means it's from uh, the highest, the one with highest resistance, uh, uh, to the one with a uh, lowest resistance, highest to lowest. Okay, for this three circuit, eh, which one has highest resistance? P, yeah. And uh, which one has lowest resistance? Lowest, eh? lowest. Q, okay, should be Q, eh? okay. And then so R is in between, okay. So that is the ascending order, okay? But if you write the answer, then you should write PRQ, PRQ, okay? Now, if you are not sure, uh, fine, okay? Then uh, you can do some calculations. Eh? You can do some calculations. Let's say we assume that, okay, we assume that uh, each bub, eh, the resistance is 3 ohm, okay? 3 ohm, 3 ohm. 3 ohm, 3 ohm, 3 ohm, 3 ohm. So for the first one, P, yeah? for P, the effective rest, what's the effective resistance for P? It's 3 ohm, right? P, yeah? it's 3 ohm. Okay. Uh, how about Q? Q. 3 ohm, 3 ohm, divided by 2, right? 3 divided by 2. Okay, 2 resistor only, yeah? 2 resistor, parallel, right? So it's 1.5, eh? 1.5, okay. R, okay, R maybe you need to do some calculations, right? We use a R equal to uh, one over three plus one over six reciprocal. Eh? Uh, that is because this section is six ohm. This section is six ohm, eh? this part. Okay, this one six ohm, eh? six ohm, six ohm, parallels with this uh, 3 ohm. So it's 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Eh? And the effective resistance is 2 ohm. 2 ohm, eh? so 2 ohm. So uh, the sending order, from the higher. The highest is P and the lowest is Q. So uh, this is important, eh? okay? Yeah? This is important because sometimes in the exam, they, they may ask you to compare yeah? which circuit has higher effective resistance, which circuit has lower effective resistance. 
current in a circuit okay current in a circuit there are a few things that you need to know about the current in a circuit okay current in a circuit the very first things that you need to know about current in a circuit is the current flow into a resistor is equal to the current flow inside the resistor and is equal to the current flows out from the resistor okay in this case you can see that there's a resistor right okay now before go into the resistor at point a the current is 2 ampere 2 ampere when the current go into the resistor it's still 2 ampere because some students think okay uh, resistor means uh, there's uh, obstacles okay it resists right obstacle so the current will be lower inside the resistor no not really okay so the current before it go into the resistor is 2 ampere when it move into the resistor is still 2 ampere still 2 ampere and when it come out from the resistor is still 2 ampere okay so therefore we say ia the current in a is equal to the current in b and is equal to the current in c so therefore therefore if you have a circuit like this there's a cell here okay and there's a resistor here okay then uh, let's say the current is 2 ampere so when it come out from the cell is 2 ampere when it move here is 2 ampere when it go here is 2 ampere it go inside the resistor is 2 ampere come out is still 2 ampere go into another resistor still 2 ampere come out from the resistor 2 ampere and is all the way to ampere back to the cell okay so therefore in a series circuit the current at any points of the circuit is the same okay any point if it's 2 ampere then any point is 2 ampere if it's 3 ampere then any point is 3 ampere that's for series circuit for series circuit eh? for parallel circuit parallel circuit when there is a current the current flow into the parallel circuit it will split okay when there's a parallel circuit there they have branches and when you go to the parallel circuit it will split okay it will split into i1 and i2 and then the current flow into a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the current in each branches of the circuit means that sum means i1 plus i2 uh, the current here plus the current here is equal to the current here so i equal to i1 plus i2 okay compared to the previous one eh? okay this one is i equal to ib ia equal to ib equal to ic eh? now this one is uh, i eh? the current here is equal to this plus this okay for example if we have a 3 ampere current eh? 3 ampere current it move into this uh, parallel circuit eh? it will split it will split one ampere go up two ampere go down but if you add these two up add these two together one ampere plus two ampere then it will equal to this three ampere it's to equal to this three ampere so this one ampere it go into the uh this uh, resistor come out still one ampere this one go into and come out still two ampere now after that they joined back they join together at this point okay and then it become three ampere again the current here plus the current here equals to the current here or current here now another question uh, another question uh, that uh, students may ask is uh, why why one ampere go up two ampere go down why not two ampere go up one ampere go down so what is the factors that determine how much current flow to this resistor and how much current flow to this resistor so what effect the, the current uh, in the this parallel circuit okay so the currents that flow into the parallel circuit eh, depends on the resistance the higher the resistance the lower the current 4 ohm 2 ohm 4 ohm is higher right then the current will be lower 2 ohm is lower then the current is higher and this 4 ohm the resistance is two times higher than this one right then the current is half of this if it's three times higher then the current will be one third of this uh, that that's the factors that affect 
So the higher the resistance in the parallel circuit, the lower the current. The lower the resistance, the higher the current. But these two add together, you will get 3 ampere. 1 plus 2, 3 ampere. One more thing. If the resistance of the two resistors is the same, 2 ohm, 2 ohm, uh, then the current will split equally. Just now we say higher resistance, lower current, right? But if the resistance are the same, eh, uh, then the current will split equally. 3 ampere, 1.5 go up, 1.5 go down. Eh? Okay, 3 divided by 2, you get 1.5. Okay, but after that, when they joined back, join together at this point, it will become 3 ampere again. Okay, potential difference in the circuit. Eh? Potential difference in the circuit. For series circuit, the sum of the potential difference across individual resistor in between two points in a series circuit is equal to the potential difference across the two points. For example, uh, there's a resistor here, there's another resistor here. Uh, if the potential difference across the first resistor is V1, and the potential difference across the second resistor is V2, then the potential difference across the two resistors is V1 plus V2. Okay, for example, uh, uh, this 2 ohm, this 3 ohm, uh, if the potential difference uh, is 2 volt, this one is 3 volt, then the potential difference across these two resistors from here to here, okay, uh, is 2 plus 3 equal to 5 volt. That is for series circuit, eh? series circuit. Uh, v is equal to V1 plus V2. That's the very first thing that you need to know. Eh? Now for parallel circuit, parallel circuit, eh? the potential difference across all the resistors in the parallel circuit uh, is the same. For example, Let's say this, these two are in parallel circuit, okay? So this is V1, this is V2, okay? And uh, this is V from this to this, okay? That is the potential difference across the two resistor. This one is the potential difference of the first resistor. This one, the second resistor. And from here to here, there's the potential difference of the two resistor together, right? They are the same, okay? They are all the same. For example, sir, this two ohm, this is three ohm, uh, the potential here is 3 volt. The potential here must also be 3 volt. No matter what, what the resistance, eh? what's the resistance? This 2 ohm or 200 ohm or 2000 ohm, okay? If this is 3 volt, this must also be 3 volt. And this, the one across the two resistors, eh? okay? This eh? must also be 3 volt. Okay? So for parallel circuit, the potential difference is the same. Okay, it's the same for all uh, the branches. Okay, here three wood, here three wood, and all together is also three wood. Okay, that's for parallel circuit. For series circuit, then you must add it up. This one plus this one equal to this one. Eh? Okay, but for parallel circuit, they are the same. V one equal to V two equal to V. Uh, this one first, eh? the EMF, the EMF and potential difference. Uh, after that. The potential change in series circuit and the potential change in parallel circuit. Uh, make sure that you understand these two. Okay, really, really understand these two. Okay, because this is a uh, very, very important uh, in understanding circuit. I will explain to you later. So let's go to the slide. Okay, this one. Okay, EMF and potential difference. Uh, we are going to discuss EMF. EMF is this uh, called electromotive force. Uh, Electromotive force. We are going to discuss electromotive force in. Okay, after this uh, circuit, uh, we will discuss EMF. So here, I, I'm not going to explain to you what is EMF. In the circuit, in this case, circuit, uh, sometimes uh, you will see something like this. They write EMF equal to 12 volt. Okay, EMF equal to 12 volt. Now, if EMF equal to 12 volt, uh, and then uh, we assume that there is no internal resistance in the cell. Okay, how do we know there is internal resistance or no internal resistance? Now, if there is internal resistance, they will tell you. Okay, they will they will write something like this. They will write uh, a small letter R and then equal to let's say uh, one ohm. Now, this small letter R represent internal resistance. 
or they will tell you in the in the questions uh, they tell, tell you that the internal resistance is equal to one ohm uh, if they tell you that there is internal resistance r equal to one ohm or two ohm or whatever okay then the emf is not equal to the potential difference okay it's not equal eh? but if there's no internal resistance no internal resistance okay erase this one if there is no internal resistance eh? Uh, then the EMF is equal to the potential difference. You can assume that they are the same. Because uh, if you want to find the current or potential difference or what, okay, you need to know this one, uh, okay, the potential difference. Okay, and uh, if the, the question uh, does not mention anything about internal resistance, then you can assume that the internal resistance is equal to zero. Uh, then the electromotive force is equal to the potential difference if this is 12 volt this is also 12 volt okay if there's no internal resistance uh, then they are the same okay that's the very first things that uh, you need to know uh, finding current in a series circuit uh, let's start with uh, with an easy one okay uh, in a series circuit the current flow through each of the resistor is equal to the current flow through the whole circuit I think we have learned this before right so let's say if the current if the current at this point is 2 ampere then the current at this point is also 2 ampere and the current here is also 2 ampere and the current here 2 ampere the current inside is also 2 ampere the current outside is also 2 ampere so therefore if they ask you to find the readings of the ammeter you can find the currents at any point okay here or here or here any points uh, okay uh, that will be the same yeah? okay if the question asks you to find uh, the readings of the ammeter okay you can use this one to find your currents or you can use this resistor to find your current and you can you can also use both of the resistor to find the currents okay the reading will be the same yeah because the current is the same uh, for the whole circuit uh, second, this is about the potential difference. Eh? The potential difference across the whole circuit is equal to the EMF if the internal resistance is ignored. Okay, for example, eh? here if they give you, they tell you that the potential difference, oh, sorry, the EMF, eh? the EMF is equal to uh, three volt. Okay, it means, eh? it means. Uh, if we ignore the internal resistance, we assume that there's no internal resistance. If the question does not mention any internal resistance, then we, we ignore the internal resistance. Huh? Okay, so we assume that there's no internal resistance. If there is no internal resistance, then uh, the potential difference across this point, the potential difference across these two points, uh, A and B, yeah, okay, is also 3 volt. Okay. A and B is also 3 volt. Eh? Okay. Then how about, uh, let's say we have C and D. If I have a volt meter uh, connecting these two points, so what's the readings of the volt meter? Yes? 3 volt. Yes. Okay. If A to B 3 volt, C to D also 3 volt. Eh? Then how about this one? Is it still 3 volt? No, okay, that's correct. No, not three water. Then how about if I connect here to here? Still three wood? Yes, okay, still three water. Okay, so very good. It means you still understand, okay, still remember. That's very good. Okay, uh, that's very important, eh? very important because usually they just give you the EMF. Eh? So they give you EMF means that from here to here, uh, three wood. C to D, 3 volt, or from this point to this point is also 3 volt. Finding current in a series circuit. Eh? If they give you the EMF, and then they give you the, if there are two resistors. Uh, from Ohm's law, eh, we learn that the relationship between potential difference, current, and resistance is given by this formula. V equals to IR, right? V equals IR. If you want to find current, I equal to V over R. I equal to V over R. Now in this case, uh, if they give you E, uh, then uh, you can use this uh, the potential difference. Uh, okay, but always remember the potential difference is between this point and this point, or this point and this point, or this point and this point. Let's take this two point. Okay, let's take this point as V. Uh, okay, 
v okay now if you take these two points for your v then your resistance is r1 plus r2 right because sometimes as the student they don't know whether they want they want to use r1 or r2 uh, okay you must be very very sure eh? okay every time that if you want to use this use this formula v equal to ir eh, to do the calculations eh, you must be very very sure for the potential difference eh? what's the two point that you choose to measure the potential difference because for potential difference you must have two points eh? you must have two points to measure the potential difference so what's the two point that you choose if you choose these two points, then your resistance is R1 plus R2. If you choose this point and this point, uh, then, uh, then you cannot use R1 plus R2. So you see here, we can use this formula V equals IR to find uh, the current uh, in a series circuit. But you must be very, very sure, eh? very, very sure about the potential difference that you use, uh, which two points you choose for the potential difference. Now let's see this example. Eh? Let's see this example. So referring to diagrams on the left, okay, I think this should be this one, okay. Find the readings of the emitter. They want to find the readings of the emitter. We can use V equals IR eh? for A. Eh? We can use V equals to IR to solve the problems. A, okay, we use V equals to IR. Okay. The very first things that you need to determine is, okay, what's your V? What's your V? So they tell you that the EMF equals to 12 volt. So uh, do you want to use this 12 volt for your calculations? So you must ask yourself, okay? If you want to use this, okay? If you want to use this, uh, then you need to know which two point, which two point you choose uh, for this 12 volt, okay? For this 12 volt, you can choose this, okay? Or you can choose this, or you can choose this. Uh, that's all 12 volt, okay? Let's say we choose this one, huh? okay? It's easy for us to see, uh, okay? So we choose this two point. So if we choose these two points for your for our V, uh, 12 volt, uh, okay? Then the resistance uh, will be two ohms, right? So 12 volt and the resistance equals to two ohm. And therefore the current is equals to 12 divided by two equals to six ampere. So uh, that is the readings of the emitter, uh, the readings of the emitter. Then they want B. They want us to find the current that flows through the resistor. That flows through the resistor. Okay. So what do you all think? The readings of the emitter is two ampere. So what's the what's the current that flows through the uh, resistor? Six ampere. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Six ampere. Why? Because I told you that for series circuit, from the beginnings to the end, the currents will be the same. If this is 6 ampere, this must also 6 ampere here, 6 ampere, inside 6 ampere, outside 6 ampere. Now A, they want us to find the readings of the emitter. Cool. So the readings of the emitter is 6 ampere, means the current here is 6 ampere. Then how about the read currents inside the resistor, flows through the resistor. Okay, and uh, just, uh, just now I think we have discussed or we have learned that current in series circuits that will be the same at any point. If the current here is 6 ampere, the current here must also 6 ampere, the current inside 6 ampere, the current outside must also 6 ampere. Okay, so therefore, uh, A, yeah, the readings of the emitter is 6 ampere, and B, the currents that flow through the resistor must also be 6 ampere. Example 6. So in this one, okay, so first they want us to find the readings of the emitter, and second they want, want us to find the current flows through each of the resistor. Okay, readings of the emitter, and uh, currents that flows through each of the resistor, this one and this one. Okay, tell me your answer for A and B. Yeah? Okay, A and B. Now for B, then you have two answers. Okay, I R one, uh, the current for R one and uh, I R two, the current for R two. Okay, the answer for A is two ampere. That's correct. Okay, currents of V equals to I R, and uh, the V is twelve volt. The I we don't know r is uh, 2 plus 4 eh? okay so the i is equals to 2 ampere how about b okay now this is a series circuit right so the currents flows through each of the resistor must also be the same eh? it's also 2 ampere and 2 ampere at the very beginnings we are going to discuss this electromotive force uh, the equations and the unit and the differences uh, between electromotive force and potential difference eh? What is EMF? Uh, EMF is uh, electromotive force. 
Okay, this is EMF, electromotive force. Eh? Uh, let's proceed to uh, the slide, electromotive force. Now, electromotive force is defined as the energy per unit charge. Now, per unit charge means per this unit charge. Eh? Unit charge is one column of charge. Eh? Unit char one unit of charge is one column. One columns of charge. That is one unit charge. Eh? So electromotive force is defined as the energy per unit charge, charge that is converted from other forms of energy to electrical energy to move uh, the charge, to move the charge across the whole circuit. So that is the uh, definitions for electromotive force. In equations, eh? in equations we write E equal to uh, W over Q. Eh? And uh, E is the electromotive force, EMF. W, w is the energy converted from non-electrical forms to electrical forms, uh, non-electrical energy. For example, so kinetic energy, uh, potentials energy, uh, chemical energy, okay? So that is a non-electrical energy and uh, converted to electrical energy, okay? And uh, Q is the charge, okay? Q is the charge. So this is the equation for uh, electromotive force. Eh? Okay, equation for electromotive force. Up to this point, eh, when you read this, eh, still looks uh, very hard to understand, right? Okay, what does this mean? What is uh, energy per unit charge? Whereas uh, other forms of energy to electrical energy, okay? So I'm going to explain to you later. Okay, don't worry. Eh? Okay, so this is definitions and this is the equations. Uh, uh, we can use these equations to do some calculation. Usually we, do, we don't use this, eh? okay? We seldom use this for the calculations, eh? okay? But uh, anyway, after this, I'm going to explain to you what does this mean, eh? okay? So don't worry. And the uh, unit of this uh, EMF is Joule per column, okay, or volt. And you can see that this is the same unit that we use for voltage eh? or potential difference. One volt means one joule of electrical energy supplies to the circuit to move one column of charge across the whole circuit. Okay, I am going to explain to you later as well this one. Okay, so don't worry about this. Okay, now let's see what does this mean, huh? Okay, what does the EMF means? From here we can see that there is a circuit here. Okay, there is a circuit. Let's say from here we can see that we have a circuit, and there is a source of uh, energy. Uh, this is cell, eh? dry cell, and we know that for dry cell, the energy convert from chemical energy inside dry cell. We have this a chemical energy, and the energy is converted from uh, chemical energy to electrical energy. So that is from other form of energy, eh? other form of energy to electrical energy. Okay, so uh, here the labels tell us that. The EMF, the electromotive force, is equal to 10 volt. Okay, 10 volt. Eh? So what does this mean? What does this mean? We have EMF 10 volt. So what does this mean? Eh? Okay, it means 10 volts. Eh? It means 10 joules of chemical energy converted to electrical energy. And the energy supplied to the circuits eh? to bring one column of charge across the whole circuit. Uh, that is uh, what does it mean by EMF 10 volts? Huh? If you see EMF 10 volts, it means that if you move one column of charge, you move one column of charge across the circuit, 10 joules, 10 joules of chemical energy. Uh, I think I should write here, okay? So 10 joules of chemical energy will convert to 10 joules of electrical energy and this electrical energy is used to move this one column of charge across the whole circuit now 10 joule is for one column only eh? okay one column let's say uh, if you want to move two column then you need 20 joule if you uh, you want to move three column then you need 30 joule okay that is what does it mean by uh, emf 10 volts emf 10 volt means that Every one column of charge move across the whole circuit eh, from the beginning to the end, eh, we do 10 joules of work. And the more work is done, the faster the charge move. 
okay if we have 20 wood means that if we can move the charge move faster if you have a 30 wood then it move even faster so this energy is related to how fast the charge move huh? the more energy the faster the charge move and the faster the charge move the higher the current huh? okay current is a measure of how fast the charge move so that is what does it mean by emf huh? that's how much energy supply to the circuit to move one columns of charge we can also see that here there's a wood meter and the wood meter give a reading 2.5 wood 2.5 wood huh? now what does this mean emf 10 wood means that 10 joules of energy give to the circuit to move one columns of charge so 2.5 wood of potential difference what does it mean we have learned potential difference uh, in previous lessons eh? so 2.5 wood means that uh, it's still one column eh? okay means that 2.5 joule of energy is needed to move this one column of charge uh, from this point to this point okay emf is for the whole circuit eh? okay potential difference is only for two point from this point to this point if you move this one columns of charge from this point to this point you need to do 2.5 joules of work uh, when we move this charge from this point to this point eh? okay the electrical energy electrical energy will converge to heat energy in this resistor okay so for potential difference eh, there's a change of uh, energy or conversions of energy from electricals to uh, other forms of energy for emf it converts other forms of energy to electrical eh? but uh, potential difference is from electrical to other forms of energy we give 10 joule to the circuit eh? we use 2.5 joule to move the one columns of charge from this point to this point okay from here to here no work done eh, because there's no resistance here 7.5 wood means that we need to do 7.5 joules of work to move this one columns of charge from this point to this point uh, that is potential difference eh? that's potential difference so so we say the potential difference 2.5 wood means that work is done to convert 2.5 joules of electrical energy into heat energy to move one columns of charge across the resistor okay this is one ohm and this is three ohm so 25 percent because this is 25 percent of the load resistance so 25 percent of the energy used here 25 percent of the energy supplied by the cell is used to move the charge across the resistor why 25 because this is 25% uh, of the load resistance uh, 1 ohm 3 ohm together 4 ohm right 4 ohm uh. so 4 this is 1 over 4 uh. 1 over 4 means 25% uh, 25% this is 3 over 4 uh. this is 75% that's the meanings of potential difference 2.5 volt uh, that's how much work done to move one columns of charge across this two point uh. then how about this one this one the potential difference 7.5 volt so it means it means work is done to convert 7.5 joules of electrical energy into heat energy eh, to move one column of charge across the resistor and this is uh, 3 ohm eh? 3 ohm means a uh, 3 quarters of the load resistance so so therefore uh, it's a 75 percent of the energy supplied by the cell to use to move the charge across this resistor uh, so that is the meanings of EMF and potential difference. EMF is how much energy you give to the circuit to move the charge. Okay, for the whole circuit, eh? and it converts uh, from uh, chemical energy to other form. Uh, sorry, other forms of energy to electrical energy. Potential difference is just from one point to another point. Eh? How much energy or how much work done to move the charge from one point to another point? Okay. Uh, that's the difference between EMF and uh, potential difference. Let's go back to the differences between electromotive force and potential difference. Eh? Okay, uh, differences and similarities actually. Okay, so e uh, EMF and the potential difference, the similarities, uh, both of them have the same unit, volt. Okay, uh, so electromotive force is measured in volt. Potential difference is also measured in volt, 
and both of them is measured by using watt meter watt meter uh, by definitions electromotive force is defined as the energy per unit charge this one is also per unit charge even though you write one columns of charge this is one unit charge okay and this is also per unit charge okay so that is per unit char charge that is converted from chemical mechanicals or other forms of energy yeah, to electrical energy in uh, batteries or dynamo okay this is a source of electrical energy yeah, batteries or dynamo okay and the symbol used for emf is this a uh, capital letter e that's the difference between uh, electromotive force and potential difference eh? potential difference we use the symbol V eh? EMF we use the symbol E the definition for potential difference uh, the potential difference between two points okay this is just two points that uh, this is for the whole circuit eh? for the whole circuit this is just two points It defined as the energy converted from electrical to other forms. this other forms to electrical eh? other forms to electrical this is electrical to other forms uh, to move one units of charge not necessary it must be positive charge okay you can cancel this positive okay cancel the positive uh so it's uh when one column of charge passes between the two points eh? so that is the difference between electromotive force and a uh, potential difference okay the symbols are difference this is the energy supplies to the circuit is from other forms of energy to electrical energy this is uh from electrical energy to other forms of energy okay, to move one column of charge uh, this is just two points uh, this is for the whole circuit 